This is a demonstration of the new tool for migrating uh, user-defined features into feature templates. So uh, I'm going to start off with a, a, an existing UDF. So this is a UDF here that's a pipe flange. And uh, you can see in the reuse library here that it's recognizing it as a UDF. Uh, if we drag this out and drop this into this model here, we'll see that we'll get um, the UDF dialog. We've got, of course, our parameters here collected at the top, expressions here at the top. There's a kind of a standard size there, and if it's too big, it starts to scroll. Uh, we can stretch that a little bit, but uh, conceptually down below, we have this white box. This is re for resolving geometric references, and this one has a couple. We're going to select a, a, a face on the, the end of this pipe down here, and it's going to highlight it for us there in the window so we can tell where it is, and then this inner edge here, and we'll select that. And with those two resolved, all uh, right, we can go and instantiate this uh, this pipe flange. This interaction here, uh, this resolve reference, is a little unique to UDF. We have this kind of box, white box with geometric references in it here, and then I think in co copy paste are the two places where that shows up. We keep this in mind here as we go to feature templates. Okay, uh, up here above, intentionally, some of these are uh, different kinds of inputs. We've got a slider for this this top one, this outer diameter. This thickness and holes diameter here, these are both option menus that have a, a bunch of, of different values in them uh, down there. Holes as well. This one's an integer slider down here. This one's, a, of course, a real number slider up at the top. So I uh, intentionally put a variety of different kinds of controls on here. So we can see that as we convert this to a feature template, we're going to preserve the style of input for these, including options that may be in menus. Uh, and this, we'll see these references go to standard NX UI selection widgets, which will be more familiar as we go into feature template. So with that, let's uh, I go ahead and instantiate this so we can see what it looks like. It looks like this little guy here on the end, right? And of course, we can double click to edit that. It takes us back to the, the UDF dialog. Um, let me cancel and undo here. And, and, and I want to convert this, okay? Now, as I do that, uh, the place we can do that here is in our tools and in parts and features and in feature template. There's, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we got to open the part that contains the definition of the UDF here. And so I'm going to open this part here that is the UDF definition part here. And what we can do then is, again, go to our tools and parts and features and feature template. And in this part here, if we're in a UDF definition part, this new feature or this new uh, utility here will become available. And this, of course, is converting a user-defined feature uh, into a uh, feature template definition, okay? So in this part file at the very end here, we have this UDF definition. If we double-click this, of course, this takes us to the UDF wizard. And this is where we step through and choose the features and expressions and things that we want to include in that UDF, right? Now, we're going to convert this little... Um, definition UDF package here into the feature template package instead. Okay. Now, just to be able to show the differences here, what I want to do is go to the Reeves library. And I'm going to copy this one just so we'll, we'll preserve the, the other one here. And I'm going to open that source folder and that'll open up this guy. And I'm going to grab that flange and copy and paste that and create a new version of this here nearby just so we can see it. That'll be our feature template version of this flange. And so with that, um, back here in the reuse library, we'll, we can see that that flange FT. So instead of this, this flange, I'm going to use this copy instead here. And let's go ahead and convert this to, uh, to a feature template. Again, this right now is a, a UDF here we can see. And, and as we go to, again, our um, tools, and parts and features and feature template. We'll get that convert in here. And this is going to happen very, very quickly. <laughs> we know what a UDF is. We have control of that definition inside. And so we can convert this to feature template pretty easily. And uh, so as we poke this here, that's going to convert, tell us it's done down there. And now as we look at this thing, this is now going to be a feature template definition. So we can come to feature template author here. We'll see that this feature template now is pre-populated with all the features that are part of that that uh, previously UDF definition. <clears throat> we also have all the expressions involved that are have come across nicely. And if we go to configure user interface here, we'll see 
the new uh, feature template flavor of the same dialogue. Okay, now one thing I mentioned there was that the geometric references are going to turn into regular NX selection widgets here. So instead of the white box with a little more unfamiliar interaction, we've got uh, standard selection bits here for selecting the face, it's like selecting the edge, the right icons for each of those, and so forth. Still have the uh, the string definitions that came across from the original dialogue that were there. We brought those across nicely. All of these definitions as well, all the 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 um, labels for all of these expressions have come across uh, as well. And and you'll see that the slider and the option menus and things like that have been preserved also as we've come over integer slider and the number slider and so forth. So uh, again, bringing across all of those very nicely. Um, and now we can start to play with this and configure this if we want to, to make it a little cleaner, right, on this side. And, and organize it in ways that we were not able to do with, with uh, uh, UDF. So for instance, up here, I might say that I want to have one group that's my uh, flange parameters um, up here at the top of the dialog, right? And for this one, I'm going to maybe select both of these things. I can grab that second ob object reference and drag it up and put it in that top folder. So those two can be right next to each other up there. And then some of these parameters are related to the flange. And um, if I want to add more groups or tabs or things, I can. But but here, for instance, the second group, let's call this the the bolt circle uh, parameters. And, uh, and so we'll have a second group that's those. So this outer diameter that goes with the flange and the face recess depth and the pipe inner flange. Let's put that outer diameter on top there. That's good. Seal face diameter we'll put there and the thickness. And then, yeah, here we go. So the hole diameter, the number of holes. Um, I kind of want the number of holes at the top. So we'll put a hole diameter below that. There we go and then bolt circle there. So in this dialog now, in the preview here, you can see that our bolt circle parameters are in a group together down there, and our flange parameters are all up here together in a group, right? So this kind of organization is a thing that, again, we weren't able to do with UDF, right? And we can do more here. We can do tab controls. We can start to add labels, including bitmaps uh, to the dialog, and, uh, and have a very robust interaction here as we migrate UDFs forward. Okay. Uh, there are also some standard things that we can do in here, uh, looking at things like the uh, layer options and things like that. We may want to have this default to use the original layers, so construction geometry, things like datums and, and sketches and so forth can go onto original layers and be on a hidden layer out there, so it instantiates very cleanly. Uh, if we want to allow users to explode this, we can. If we want to turn that off, that'll remove that explode option from the from the dialog there. And um, so, yeah, with that, we can uh, go ahead and save this, right? So as we finish this here, that's again going to to save that back to our um, feature template definition. So this is now again in our part, and we can save this part. And uh, the version in the reuse library now is going to be our new uh, feature template version, right? So this FT version now, of course, is the one that we just edited. Um, I can leave this open, but I'm going to close this just for fun. And uh, we've got our test pipe. And now as we drag this this guy out, actually, let me refresh this. There we go. Now it's a feature template. <laughs> the original here is a UDF. This one's a feature template. And as we drag this out here, we'll see that it'll launch our new dialog this time. Uh, we have similar preview here. We'll grab our pipe end face, our inner edge there. And then we can play with these parameters if we want to. Uh, it's going to bring it in our original layer, so we'll be nice and clean as it as it comes in, and uh, we can go ahead and do that, right? So there's our migrated flange that uh, came from our original flange that looked like this one, and uh, so that's uh, that that's the process there, right? Pretty straightforward. Again, if you want that default UI as it comes across to the feature template, you can certainly use that. Again, it'll create the native selection um, objects if you've got uh, geometric selections or geometric references to uh, to uh, preserve there. And um, if you want to, again, you can rearrange those, rename those, move them, organize them, put them into groups, collapsible and so forth, start to add visibility controls and and uh, images and so forth in the uh, the rich authoring environment for feature templates. Okay, so I hope you find that useful.